guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are continuing our watch of Columbo with season one, episode seven, Blueprint for Murder. This is the final episode of Columbo season one, and it was directed by the man himself, Peter Falk. Ultimately, this was his first and last time directing. <laughs> which we will talk about at the end of the video, but let's go ahead and dive on in for today. This episode premiered February 9th, 1972. Its guest stars were Patrick O'Neill as the killer, Janice Page, Pamela Austin, Forrest Tucker, and John Fielder. Fun little fact about John Fielder, he is actually the voice of Piglet in the Winnie the Pooh series, and it's kind of hard to miss. <laughs> When, when you hear him talk, it's a, like an immediate dead giveaway. So that's kind of a fun little fact diving in today's episode. That, that, that was a c c c close one. Oh, dear. oh dear, dear, dear. I actually just watched a Bonanza episode where he plays this silly bumbling man who's very awkward and Haas kind of helps him not to be. It was a very cute episode, but I just find it funny that I have just recently watched that, and now I'm watching a Columbo episode with John Fielder in it as well. I when I was young, but I can't see the reach. Oh, Clancy, I Clancy, Clancy when stop when it! Young. It wasn't him, it was me! Hoss just made the deal! I bought the mine! The episode description is... At tremendous expense to the city, Columbo excavates the area surrounding the newly poured foundation of a building to search for a corpse. That felt like a loaded mouthful <laughs> of an episode description. Okay, we're kicking it right off. I forgot, this episode just throws you in. <laughs> Was not ready for that car horn. <laughs> God, I love the sound of footsteps. You can't go in there, Mr. Williamson. That's quite an outfit, Mr. Williamson. <laughs> it's incredible, isn't it? Williamson City, that's very impressive. Ah, Mr. Williamson! Ah! Mr. Williamson. Boy, he just really came in, ruined her day, and then walked out. <laughs> that shouldn't be that funny to me, but... He literally just he came in, he was like, I'm about to end this woman's whole day. Mr. Markham! This is a really interesting setting for an episode. Thank you, thank you. What's the matter? Williamson City, that's what's the matter. Jennifer and I assumed you'd be delighted. Delighted? Let me tell you, nobody throws a lasso around my money without my consent, and that includes my wife, and you had better believe it. And I suggest you consider what you're saying. You're not talking to one of your underlings. Oh, now. listen, I know exactly who I'm talking to. Oh, no, bo bo this guy's given the project, anger in his performance as everything. As that city stands, your, your name will be remembered. I'm going to tell you something, Jackson boy. My wallet is a lot more important to me than my name. You wouldn't recognize Art if you fell over it. We have a chance to do something extraordinary here, and you're trying to ruin it. That's right, right, right. And if you're on some kind of an ego trip, you find somebody else to pay for it. Would you commission me to design your burial vault? Yikes. <laughs> That'd be but your speed, yeah. You really would like to see me dead, wouldn't you? Oh, and if you're thinking of any uglies, forget it. What was that? Wasn't quite a slap or a love tap either. <laughs> I don't know what that was. That guy, um, uh, Mr. Williamson, was giving his all with his anger in that performance. Anyway, she's in Palm Springs at some health farm. Golden Dunes retreat. That's the one. Get She didn't even bother to clean it up. Williamson, do that. Yes, sir. He just barged right in, and when he saw. Oh, never mind. You reached Jennifer. They wouldn't put the call through to her. The guests aren't allowed to have telephones. Then she's virtually incommunicado. No telegrams, she's no outside she's virtually distance. incommunicado. Just sweet German push-ups. Thanks, Miss Sherman. She's virtually yeah. incommunicado. She's virtually incommunicado. Man, this episode is loaded. Like, in the first five minutes, they are throwing everything at you. Oh, oh, oh beautiful, beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. See that? One of my dreams Thank is you, to live on a ranch in wide like open that. spaces. I'll be back in a few days. Check him out. With horses. I'll take him back to the barn and cool him off. You better. With nobody around. <laughs> hey, I wonder uh, where man. this was filmed. I need to look up these beautiful. filming locations. Jesus. <laughs> I had no memory of that. Was he just down there the entire time? Hello, Bob. Surprise. <laughs> That's really weird, dude. What are you doing in my car? <laughs> Waiting for you. Get out. 
Okay, but we do need to have a conversation about his jacket. Because there's a lot happening there. I think that's one of the only times where we really don't see, like, the intri intricacies of a murder on Columbo. I love how they do the juxtaposition of the killer doing his thing with, like, a classical piece of music. There's a weird elegance about it. They're refined in their killings, which I think I've said before. Boy, what a house. That was clearly shot during the day, and then they darkened the footage. I love it when they do that. I love old filmmaking. Wow, that really is one of the only times a, a, a killer commits the crime, but we really don't see as much of the details in the, the killing. Thank you. Like, as like like compared to Lady in Waiting. Father. Or, or um, Gene Barry in Prescription Murder. Difficult for me. I'm just grateful I have so many wonderful friends. Hello. Hello. Where are you going? Over there. No one's allowed in there. No one's allowed in there without an invitation. Really? Oh yes, yes, he two stories high. looks so it's tiny in <laughs> contrast to everybody else. Be offices so much which as, makes him stand out <laughs> much more. It could become virtually a second home, a uh, kind of a uh, remarkable place of mobility and freedom. You're asking about the price earlier. We've been. Who is uh, he talking to? Well, we haven't quite figured it out. We've been dickering around. Thirty-five. Excuse me. I was like, who is his conversation for, directed for to? That girl course. in the gray. Uh, there's something you want? But I'm looking for Mrs. Williamson. I'm Mrs. Williamson. And who might you be? Uh, Lieutenant Columbo. You called the police? I did. Well, that's what they told me. Lieutenant, I may not be the brightest lady in the world, but I do know whether I made a phone call or not. Well, this is very, very weird because. They told me that they got a call. Gold. Who's Goldie? My husband's first wife. She must have called you. Well, why would she do that? I guess because Bo's been out of the country for eight weeks, and he came back on business for a day, and I suppose left again. They've been divorced a long time. She's literally like she still reading her lines. Goldie Mr. is Williams a little is possessive. Is that the word? The moment's notice doesn't even tell Jennifer. I'm actually excited to see Goldie. Um, I love her. <laughs> I remember she made quite an impression on me. No, no, one of my staff did that. Oh, tell me, how did you two meet? Oh, Mr. Markham designed a summer house for us. It's incredible. When everyone sees your plans for Williamson City, you'll be buried in commissions. Well, let's not talk about our project till it's hatched. You'll have to excuse us, Lieutenant. One of the obligations of the trade have to mingle. Oh, and don't worry about my husband, Lieutenant. Believe me, he's very much alive. He's dead, I tell you. <laughs> I can feel it in my spine. <laughs> Lower, honey. Lover, take my word for it. He has shuffled off this veil of tears. Well, how do you know that? Because he always calls me before he leaves town, and this time he didn't. Yeah, but if he didn't call you, how do you know he left town? I spoke with the child bride. <laughs> you mean Mrs. Williamson? The current Mrs. Williamson. I call her the next ex. Oh, don't get me wrong, lover. I love Goldie. Half my age and twice as pretty, but I like her. Bo reached the point where he thought he needed a younger woman, and she's better than most. You got a pretty healthy attitude. I hmm. can afford it. He pays, you know. I tell you, lover, if Golda May was legal tender, I'd rule the world. That's enough for today, Miko. I'll see you tomorrow. Dozo yoroshiku, Columbo-san. Ano ne, dewa matta. Sayonara. Sayonara, see. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> he bowed. <laughs> She's a lovely girl. She is a lovely girl. <laughs> I don't know what she said, but it sounded like she liked me. Oh, Lieutenant, would you like to turn around? I don't want to corrupt you. <laughs> I love Goldie. Okay. She's great. You can turn around now. Oh, he's adorable. Uh, the point is this, Mrs. Williamson. My friends call me Goldie. And since I'm standing here practically naked with you, you better be my friend. <laughs> I said, since I'm standing here practically naked with you, you better be my friend. And my friends call me Goldie. <laughs> I see. Goldie, uh... Lordy, uh, what a good interaction. Don't you think it's possible that your ex-husband could have slipped up and left town without calling you? 
No way. He never forgets. Lieutenant, we were married for 22 years. Jennifer gives him youth. For the rest, he comes to me. Even if he leaves town for just a few days, he always lets me know. Every time. Yeah? I do it's love I do love her yeah. entire getup. I love her vibe. They found Bo Williams's car. You see, what did I tell you? At the airport. Oh, I'm going to go down and check it out. But it really looks like he left town. <laughs> Don't want to ruin my makeup. <laughs> I love it when he does that. That that finger on the nose is such a trademark move of Columbo. Ah, I remember cassettes. Uh, did I hear you say that he took his passport? Well, it isn't here, and he spends a lot of time in Europe. Oh, yes, that's right. Globetrotter. That's what Mr. Markham called him. Mm-hmm. Say, I noticed that he likes country and western music. Does a bear like honey? <laughs> What's all this guff about cars and music and passports? Who is Dr. Morse? <laughs> what? I see in your husband's appointment book, Dr. Morse, 1045, the 11th of the month. That's tomorrow. He'd never leave town if he had an appointment with his heart specialist. Oh, he had a bad ticker, did he? Hey, look at this. Blueprints. What's he doing? Building a bigger house? <laughs> Those are the preliminary plans for Williamson City. Williamson City? And Mr. Markham, did he design that? That's right. Boy, Especially look at like her that. outfit. Well, Goldie is slaying. You don't know. Go off, Goldie. It's possible he's a bit more complicated than you think. The day he came back, he saw those plans, and Elliot said he loved them. Oh, then Mr. Markham saw your husband before he left town. They had a meeting the day he came back. I was taking a lot of notes during that scene. I really actually like how much the camera follows Columbo through these scenes in this episode. They did it at the construction site, too, which was fun. Are you a policeman? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, no, he just had a badge Columbo, for uh, no reason. Excuse me for just one moment. <laughs> is something wrong? Oh, no, no, no. No, nothing's wrong. No, I wanted to speak to Mr. Markham. Uh, is he in there? I'm sorry, Lieutenant. He isn't in. If you want him, you'll find him at the university giving a lecture to his students. Oh, really? Oh, you mean he teaches too, huh? Well, he's short he's a dynamo. compared to her. Like that throws off sparks and never slows down. Everyone likes to feel that he's participating in something important. <laughs> he went into the other room when he got her talking. <laughs> I love his tactics. Not, not the year, mind you. <laughs> Lieutenant? Lieutenant. <laughs> is this where he works? Yes, it is. Marvelous office. Yes, it is. Spacious. Yes, it is. <laughs> Conference room? Yes, it is. <laughs> Very handy, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, office, it huh? is. Yeah. Classical stuff? Uh -huh. My favorite. Just love it. Mr. Markham has good taste. <laughs> Peter seems very uh, relaxed in this episode. What happened here? An accident. Isn't that something? Williamson City. I know I shouldn't be talking about this, but it's a shame Mr. Markham has to work for a man like that. Yes, he just barged right in here the other day and smashed it all to smithereens. So aside from being visually impressive with their bulk and simplicity... That's an interesting the tools shot. Are also a the locations are really fun in this episode. Of now, those of you with failing grades will be permanently in tune. Ha, 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 ha. ha. Wow, that guy in the salmon pink <laughs> tux. That is really making a statement. Shout out to him. Shout out to the extra in the suit, the pink suit. Say, that stuff about burying those Egyptians, is that true? According to some experts? Well, you know, the idea of burying a body in a place where you can't find it, if I ever murdered anybody, uh, that's what I would do. Hmm. Well, you wouldn't put them in a pyramid today. He just put all of his cars well, on the table. today you'd have to find another place like, uh, gee, I don't know, um, like the uh, foundation of a building. You know, now that you mention it, that would be a terrific place. I mean, you put a body under a building, you wouldn't find it for a hundred years. He came to this conclusion I'll keep that quick. in mind, Lieutenant, in case I killed somebody. Now, uh, if you'll get to your questions, I haven't had any dinner. 
Uh, I can offer you some raisins. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Would you get that board for me? Oh, certainly. So this, uh, ah, chalkboards. Oh, Still had them oh, in high school. Way, I stopped by your office because I wanted to talk to you. I couldn't help noticing that smashed up model of Williamson City. There's a perfectly simple explanation, Lieutenant. Bo was angry, and for good reason. We went ahead on the project without his permission. It was very undiplomatic of us. Oh, you mean you and his wife? Yes, well, Jennifer's uh, an admirer of my work. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I got a no, problem. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll get it, I'll get it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> back from trip and the, uh, his shortness plans. plays against him. Surprise. Won't his disappearance interfere with your plans to move ahead? Lieutenant, all the evidence indicates that he simply left the country. But you know, we checked out every flight list, and there wasn't one Williamson on it. How is it just possible, for reasons not known to us, that he might occasionally fly under a different name? <laughs> that is possible. Then I wouldn't worry about it. The car's got a tape machine in it, and the glove compartment is full of cassettes. Every one of them is country and western music. That's all. And his wife tells me this man doesn't listen to anything else. No, except the radio dial was set at 52. Classical station. Turned it on. Classical music. I see. You want a half a candy bar? <laughs> Whoever was driving that car must have been listening to classical music. I'm sure you'll find an answer. I really like Peter Falk's performance in this episode. I'm certainly going to try. It's, um... Anyway, thanks for your time. Full of ease. You know, that's some coincidence. <laughs> there it goes again. That music thing. You're a great classical music fan yourself, aren't you? Guilty, Lieutenant. I like classical music, along with a few hundred thousand other people in this city. Mm. Me too. I like it myself. Enjoy your meal. Mm. They're such an interesting psychological yeah, thing yeah, about know, how Henry's Columbo Texas approaches the, the killers. Williams Williamson. Really getting to know everything about Mr. them, Mars. their likes, their dislikes, the way they think. He has to well, kind of think like them. What do you do? You keep a record when you put them in the ground? Have to. And which one's first? The day, the time, how long it took, and how many men I had on the job. Look in it. Well, it must have been that lecture, Mr. Martin. Looks like he's going to go hunting for dinosaurs in Jurassic before, Park. But I'm interested in them now. Hey, tell me the truth, Lieutenant. Boy, hey, he's short names. next to him. Or is he really tall? <laughs> well, if anything interesting turns up, I'll surely get in touch with you. There's a weird ease about this episode. Like, it's just like a chill, vibey episode. Any other time, I think my watch is out of order. 10.30. I don't want to be late. I got an appointment at the... Doctor, really, I never intended to have an exam. <laughs> he's, he's so piglet! <laughs> Blood pressure's a bit low. Well, that's normal for me. Now, you get enough exercise. It's just well, human I, uh, piglet. I it's so... <laughs> Doctor, listen, I just had a police visit. Can't have too many, Lieutenant. There this, we go. This guy now, just giving him an exam yeah. anyway. What I mean is this. Was this particular appointment any more or any less important than the others? If Bo Williamson doesn't get to me, or, or any other specialist, he's running a grave risk with his health. This is a pacemaker. It regulates a heart that can't keep a steady beat of its own. These energy cells have to be replaced, or the pacemaker becomes erratic, causing the heart to malfunction. In other words, you could die. Put simply, yes. All right, Doc. Listen, I want to thank you very much for the time and for the checkup. Well, it wasn't much of a checkup, but you're welcome. Uh, do you have a lighter? You won't find one here, Lieutenant. And let me give you some free medical advice. Stop smoking those things. Well, I've, I've been trying. Trying isn't good enough. Dude, he is just the living embodiment of Piglet. His voice is a character. Wow. And his eyes, could his eyes be any bluer? John Fielder's eyes are like... Like, they pierce into your soul. They're so blue. Columbo's never going to give his cigars. Are you kidding me? It's his trademark. It's who he is. It's part of his personality. His aura. Well, love, are you satisfied? Goldie, what are you doing here? Same thing you are, checking up on Bo. Didn't Look at her outfits. There you go again. Columbo, the man, is dead. Now, he would never miss an appointment with a doctor. He was always very nervous about his health. Now, that may be. I really There's like no Goldie. Proof. I There's really like her. on yet. Please slow down. You're running me ragged. Well, that's the object of the game. Isn't there anything you do badly? Yes, lose. That was an, it. Those were lost? some interesting Come camera on, angles there. I kind of want to go back and watch that. Back right, ready or not, it was I'm like serving. zoomed in on her face and then it followed him and then it pulled out. That was interesting. Elliot! 
A battered bloodstained hat by itself means next to nothing. Well, it looks kind of strange, though, don't you think? We don't even know if he was wearing a hat if he was killed. We don't, but the question is, where did it come from? I am really enjoying Peter Falk's performance in this episode. Time. Thanks, anyhow. It feels so natural. What I could really use is a cigar. Maybe fun. <laughs> Here they are, Lieutenant. You really took that doctor I seriously. Found them in the attic. But why you want them, I don't know. You see, army is all of her dialogue ADR? Yeah, here it is. Like, I feel like she's saying things, but they don't feel like she's speaking. I still think this is an exercise in futility. We don't even know if it's his hat. Lieutenant, it's for you. It's always for him. Hello. Yeah, that's what I figured. Thank you. We used to have a phone like that. My family. Be positive. It's the same as your husband's. I'm sorry, ma'am. Then something did happen to him. Lieutenant, tell her that blood on a hat doesn't necessarily mean that Bo's dead. Well, that's true. It doesn't. But I say we have a whole new ball game. Game, set, match. <laughs> Sorry, strict orders. He doesn't. Want Whoa, to that guy's hair. He's playing that music awfully loud. Is that bad real mood? or a wig? He doesn't have bad moods. Let's just say he's been happier. <laughs> this poor secretary. Hello, Jennifer. How are you? Feeling any better? I'm not sure how I feel. I just keep thinking about that hat. But, you know, I may I may have an explanation for you. You think you can arrange to uh, have Bo's will sent over? Bo's will? What on earth for? Get out of there! Oh, that won't help Goldie. I've already seen him. Poking wow, around Goldie. Closet. Now you've got no right. What Ooh, a statement of an outfit. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, don't you? Well, you planted that hat. You manufactured the whole show just to back up your story <laughs> Bo's dead. You're reaching, mister. According to this, the minute Bo Williamson's officially dead, you inherit 25% of his estate. You're after me for some reason, and all I'm trying to do is to point out what's plain as the nose on your face. Suppose we call Lieutenant Colombo. We'll leave it up to him. Oh, listen now, I can save yourself the trouble. The omnipresent constable. What are you the doing The omnipresent here? constable. Well, you may let me in. How long are you standing there? I guess I did hear the tail end of what you were saying. Well, then I guess you know what kind of fertilizer this boy is spreading around. Hmm. That stuff about the will, that's, uh, well, that's good police work. I thought you were my friend. Goldie, I am your friend. Because hmm. I'm your friend, I'd like to give you some advice. I think it would do you a lot of good if you told the truth. I am telling the truth. Are you? See, I just spoke to that nice Japanese girl that gives you the massages. Nico? And she told me that she noticed a bandage cut on the back of your leg this morning, and it wasn't there yesterday. Pure coincidence, I cut myself shaving. It turns out that you and Mr. Williamson have the same blood type. Obviously, she took one of her husband's old hats, added some blood from a self-inflicted wound, and left it near the tennis court. Anything to make it look as if Bo had been murdered. The lab tells me that the blood is only 24 hours old. All right, all right, I did it. I planted the hat. I was just trying to get everybody off the dime. Well, there's no real harm done. Surely she didn't break any laws. Your help I don't need. <laughs> well, like Mr. Markham says, there was no harm done. Oh, Mr. Markham, may I borrow that will for an hour or two? It belongs to Jennifer. Why don't I take it back to her? I'm sure dropping it off will take you out of your way. He's got a leg up on you. Don't mess with the omnipresent constable, Markham. <laughs> He'll get you. <laughs> <laughs> that little frame of him driving by in Colombo. Good shot. I like that. There, there is some fun direction in here from Peter Falk. I won't lie. Some of the shots are a little long, the was for but you, there are some Martin. creative shots that I'm I sure like. He was. I see you have our building record. Yes, sir. But he wanted to take a look. Uh, well, listen, I didn't think you'd mind. Lieutenant, anybody ever tell you you're very much like an arachnid? What? A tick. <laughs> They're quite common, but excessively tenacious. They hang on. They tenacious arachnid. Oh, I never heard of them. Mile D3. What do you mean? Let's dig it up. What? Oh, hmm. then, come on, you know you want to. Oh, it's such a marvelous place to, to hide a body. The crew comes in, digs a hole, hole sits there overnight. If I were a murderer, hypothetically speaking, of course, it'd be made to order. I am really enjoying Peter's performance in this oh, no, episode. I don't know what murderer, it is. 
hypothetically, like you said, you're not going to tell this to the It just feels no so else. natural. Be able like, to dig it up. I know I've said that 80 times throughout this episode, but I am enjoying him so much in this particular episode. <laughs> Tiny little man running into the frame. <laughs> I love him so much. How much would it cost? I mean, I actually dig up pile D3. Well, a great deal more than your bank account, Lieutenant. To say nothing of the permits, assuming you got permission, which is doubtful. There's no body, no proof. Aside from Goldie's pathetic attempted at fraud, no motive. Well, actually, there is a motive. I have no interest in seeing Bo dead. I want the city built. Might help if you found a body. I gotta come up with something concrete. Interesting choice of words. You see the chess pieces moving into place. the little body language it's the nuances it's the glances it's the awkward nose touches everything about the tiny little nuances that make up Columbo Peter Falk is so good at it he's so good at it it's hard to find actors these days who can just be instead of trying to be does that make sense like so many times you'll see actors trying to be somebody else instead of it just being like this easy thing for them like doesn't even feel like he's acting he just is the character this is me going to the DMV. <laughs> See, I know, like, this is a particularly long scene, but I don't always think that that's bad, because you were really forced to sit with I, the uh, character. I need some uh, information uh, about just, the... just a minute, please. <laughs> His glance. He's so over it. Yes? And how do I go about uh, getting permission to dig up a pile of a building that's already under construction? A pile of a building that's under construction. I want to dig it up. Regular size pile? Yeah. 10,000 pounds. I would think so. <laughs> do you know how much a thing like that would cost? No, how much? Oh, I feel his annoyance. Yeah. Well, uh, you will have to have a departmental approval under Regulation 613 of the Municipal Code. Once you get that, you file your permits, your requisition uh, slips, and uh, if the mayor's office approves of that, then you're set. Been to the Structural Engineering Department? What for? You have to show the exact foundation to be torn out so we can make our estimates. I like how Rule they make him work for it. Down the hall. All right, I'll be right back. See, I don't think a scene like this would make it into a uh, TV show today because it would be considered too long. But I do think scenes like this, they serve to attach you to Columbo's character. I've said this time and time again. I think sequences like this aren't always bad. Got him. Good. Well, lunch hour. Come back at one o'clock. Ah, I feel his annoyance. Ah, that's annoying. I don't think scenes like that would fly today. I, I just don't. You'd be like, oh, there was no point in that. Like, yeah, maybe you could cut it down like a little bit. Oh, that's a good shot, actually. Side tangent, sorry, ADHD. That's a good shot of Columbo in the car. How much is this going to cost? I don't know. Inspector, how much is all this going to cost? Why don't you ask the omnipresent constable? All right, Lieutenant. Yeah, you can still stop it before it's too late. Well, you know, I went to so much trouble to get the permission that, uh, I think I'd better go ahead. Well, that's up to you. I hope you realize how much work you're causing for a great many people. They're taking a picture. You're gonna be a celebrity on the 6 o'clock news. All right, come on, fellas. Give me a break, huh? <laughs> I want to apologize for the press. I didn't realize they were gonna be here. No, I invited mm. them. Hope you don't mind. I intend to make a statement when you're finished. You do. Hmm. Well, maybe I'll have a statement of my own. Oh, Columbo's annoyed. Carl? Interesting. You're keeping a record of the delay in construction time, aren't you? Yes, sir. Lieutenant. The queen is there back. You, are. you 
just stay right there because I am gonna love you to death. <laughs> Look at her outfits. Are you getting? I don't even hate them. I don't even hate her outfits. Well, it depends on what's down there. The usual gold, bedrock and cement. Hmm, I wonder. Don't be intimidated. I think he's scared. Hmm. I like this duo. This is a good duo. Another half on. Nervous, Lieutenant? Yeah, a little. Hmm. Why not? You're learning architecture the hard way. Hmm. Now here, I think that there are some lingering construction shots they could probably take up. <laughs> what are these shots here? I don't think you need all of this. It would be cut. I guess I was wrong. Mr. Markham, I think I owe you an apology. Is that all you have to say? Lieutenant, you say you owe me an apology. Well, you owe me a great deal more than that. There's not a trace of a body, not a bit of clothing, not a ring, nothing. You didn't find Bo Williamson because he isn't here and he never was. Stop gloating. Lieutenant, I'm sure you have a lot of explaining to do to your superiors, so if you'll forgive me, I'll be off. Here, put this on. I'm sorry, lover. <laughs> oh, that's okay, Goldie. No, it's my fault. I put the bug in your ear. They going to suspend you or something? I don't know. I'll buy you a drink. No, that's okay. Thank you, Goldie. You go ahead. I mean, like, you get the impression that he's very defeated. But then again, you really never know what is an act with Columbo. Ooh, that's a nice shot there. Um, versus what he actually feels. Like, sometimes that line is a little hard to distinguish between. I like that scene of him putting on his jacket. There are, there are some really nice moments in this episode. Or he could have just been baiting Markham to, like, get rid of the body. Also, how many days has it been? Oh, God. I, you know what? It's like I said before. I haven't seen season one in, like, a very long time, so not all of it is fresh. But did he really keep the body for, like, a week or however long it's been? Ooh, that's kind of nasty. Dude, that's got to smell so bad. This is like one of the only episodes where like the murder is kind of committed throughout. Like it's not, it's not shown in the beginning, but it kind of concludes throughout the episode, which is unique. Oh no, what you gonna do? <laughs> License and registration, please. That was a real nice piece of driving you did back there. The way you handled it, the way you pulled it over. Could have been hairy. Yeah, that, so that mm. could have been. That's, uh, well, well, there's no real harm done. I, thank you for stopping. I, I appreciate it. Open up. What? A truck. You might as well get your keys and I'll help you out with a spare. Mmm. Markham is panicking. Isn't that ridiculous? What? <laughs> My spare. No air. It's useless. Well, you know how that is. Well, why don't I call a tow truck? They'll bring out a pump. Oh, yeah, that's great. Well, thanks a lot. Dude. Okay. Interesting. Barely dodging that bullet. not gonna look good buddy i mean he was already effed when he pulled that tire out from his trunk that already would have looked weird <laughs> the music good evening mr markham oof had to be all the way weren't you well i kind of had a hunch yep it was an act you see you kept trying to finesse me into digging up that pile and I had to ask myself why. I mean, you're not a dumb man, Mr. Markham. You wouldn't lead me right to the body. Why'd you dig it up? Well, I had to play along, didn't I? <laughs> but what you really wanted was a foolproof hiding place. Now, what's better than a place that's already been searched and at considerable cost and my embarrassment? Officer? <laughs> no, no, don't bother. Wow, you, you went pretty far with that. Clever idea. Oh, yeah, it was perfect. Who would look in the same place twice? You know, bodies have a funny way of surfacing. 
<laughs> oh, this was brilliant. Eventually, you would have had a whole building over the grave. It was just that music thing that bothered him. <laughs> Carnegie Hall in Nashville. They don't mix. <laughs> no, they don't. Carnegie Hall in Nashville. They don't mix. That's right. He can't give up the cigars. But he thinks he can. <laughs> Hell no, he could never. Also, it's too it's too much of a trademark, <laughs> so wow. There's that theme again. Directed by Peter Falk. The first and the last time. Alright, guys, we have officially finished season one of Columbo. Wow, we made it. What a journey. <laughs> It's been a while. I We've been going through this for quite a bit. Like I said, it's just life has been absolutely crazy and I'm trying to figure out a schedule that works best for me, especially because editing these reaction videos takes for freaking ever. So I'm gonna have to think about that before we dive into season two. But yeah, let's briefly talk about Blueprint for Murder and then we'll read an excerpt from Shooting Columbo based on where I placed it. So let's go ahead and look at what I wrote down for Blueprint for Murder. Random thing I wrote down here. Maybe it's because I have bananas on the mind Sorry if I'm bringing up Bonanza a lot, but I, it's the show I'm watching at the moment. Mr. Williamson reminds me of Lorne Green yelling in the early <laughs> seasons of Bonanza. So that scene where Mr. Williamson and Mr. Markham were arguing in the beginning, it just reminded me of Lorne Green and how much he used to yell in the first two seasons of Bonanza. I don't know why that came to mind, but that came to mind. If anybody's committed a crime, it's that John J. Hatton. Harrison and that confounded conspiracy of his to bankrupt his own bank, and I think you know it. Williamson City, that's what's the matter. The joyride is over. That's right, right, right. The filming locations were actually awesome for this episode. I really liked the farm, the construction site, Mr. Williamson's house, the offices, the college. The locations in this episode were really interesting and fun to me, and they just felt a little different outside of what we're normally used to seeing in Columbo, so I thought that was really fun. For some reason, I really enjoyed Peter Falk's performance in this episode specifically. I don't know what it is exactly, but he just seemed so much more relaxed. Like, it just seemed, everything seemed super effortless to me. It didn't even feel like he was playing a character, not to say that he feels like he's playing a character, most of the time, but there was something about this episode that was so chill with not only him, but just the aura of this episode. It just felt like super vibey. I saw a post online once that said, watching Columbo is like running errands with an old friend. And this episode very much felt like that for me. So I particularly enjoyed Peter Falk's performance in this episode. So speaking of Peter Falk, he directed this episode. So I was trying to pay attention a little more to how the episode was shot. There were a lot of lingering camera angles, which I think were both good and bad. I did like how a lot of the shots followed Columbo through the scenes. So you have like at the construction site when he is first arriving at like the little celebratory party and he's walking through the environment. He's walking around Mr. Markham and he's looking for Bo Williamson's wife. They did something similar to when he was at the apartment with both the wives, both the ex-wife and then the current wife. The way he was moving about the apartment, I just really appreciated how the camera followed him. Like if Columbo walked up to the camera, the camera followed him, it pulled back. It was just, I thought that was really interesting and I really liked it. I do think some of the camera shots were a little long and we didn't, we didn't really need them. So like when you get to the construction scene, at the very end where, you know, like they're digging and are they gonna find a body? Like, I feel like they were trying to build up the tension of that, but it was so chill and it went on for so long. It's like, okay, moving along guys. <laughs> I get what you're trying to do here, but let's move it along. Again, I think it was just a matter of trimming. You know, it's not like I hated it entirely. I mean, one could argue the scene of Columbo sitting in the car listening to music could have been cut down as well, but I don't always hate those lingering shots, especially when you look at it through the context of today. So much about television and movies in general today is so quick, it's so fast. And for me personally, it's like, I can't even think about what I'm watching until we cut to the next scene. I do wanna sit with these characters and I do wanna get to know them. And I do think long scenes 
like that do have their place because they really do serve to attach you to the character and let you go through these experiences with them. It's it's interesting the impact that camera angles can have on an episode and how long Peter Falk chose to make some of those scenes. So that was just something that stood out to me. I wrote down, she's virtually incommunicado. She's virtually incommunicado. That was a fun line. <laughs> I liked that line. Random, but I wrote down, yes, it is. 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 Again, with the ensemble cast, I when the ensemble cast in Columbo is strong or it's funny, it pushes up the episode. You know, it creates the foundation. Haha. <laughs> it creates the foundation of the episode and like really makes it that much stronger, particularly with Goldie. I really, really, really like the character of Goldie, and I believe it's Janice Page who plays her. Janice Page plays, I almost said Goldie Hawn. <laughs> Not Kurt Russell's Goldie. The Goldie character is so fun. I thought she lifted up every scene that she was in when she came in. I'm like, yes, bring in this sassy lady. I love her energy. I tell you, lover, if Golda May was legal tender, I'd rule the world. Didn't hate her outfits. They're wild, but didn't hate them. I think they added to her character, which is why I was like, oh, I don't mind this. She had really good chemistry with Peter Falk. I really liked them as a duo. You just stay right there because I am going to love you to death. But she was really great. And I think she elevated the quality of the episode in every scene that she was in. Shout out to the scene where she's getting a, getting a massage and she's just so forthright with Columbo. She's like, well, I'm standing here practically naked with you, so you better be my friend. And Columbo's like, okay, well, all right. <laughs> Since I'm standing here practically naked with you, you better be my friend, and my friends call me Goldie. Oh. Again, like you have the ensemble cast, it's not just Goldie, you have Jennifer, the new young wife, you have the secretary whose day gets ruined in the beginning, which I kind of felt bad for her. <laughs> That adorable interaction that <laughs> Columbo had with the masseuse. And he has no idea what she's saying, but he's like, Sayonara. <laughs> Sayonara. Sayonara, see. It's so cute. Patrick O'Neill, I, I actually don't know what I think of him as Mr. Markham. Like, I think he was good. I liked him. He didn't leave a huge impression on me, but I don't think he did a bad job. He's not, he's definitely not like a Jack Cassidy or Robert Culp. He didn't jump out at me. Um, I enjoyed him, but I don't think he's one of the more memorable Columbo killers. Oh, I wrote down, John Fielder is such a distinctive human. <laughs> he is. He was in the episode for like a five minute scene, but he made an impression on that scene. You better not do that. You better stop smoking those cigars. And let me give you some free medical advice. Stop smoking those things. I wrote down the omnipresent constable because that's a great line. The omnipresent constable. All in all, I liked that episode. It's very easy to watch. I wouldn't say it's one of the greatest Columbo episodes ever, but I think it's like mid to higher. I would definitely put it above Short Fuse and I would definitely put it above, I might put it above Lady in Waiting and Dead Weight. D it's definitely above Dead Weight for sure. Oh. And I think I might put it above Lady in Waiting just because I enjoyed Peter Falk's performance in this episode so much. So those are my thoughts on Blueprint for Murder. What did you guys think? Make sure you drop a comment and let me know because I'm always interested to hear your thoughts and how they might differ from mine or what you caught on to. So with that being said, we are going to do a very quick excerpt from Shooting Columbo. And then maybe I'll quickly rank the season one episodes. I did write down my thoughts about that. So let's take a look at what Shooting Columbo has to say. So as you guys know, Peter Falk was fighting to direct an episode. He was like, I want to direct. And then NBC was like, no. And then Peter Falk was like, well, fine. I'm not going to show up on set. And then NBC crumbled. Levinson and Link had long since realized that Universal would fold in their standoff with Falk. So they had Bochco already preparing a devilishly difficult script for Falk to direct as payback. <laughs> During production of Suitable for Framing, they presented Falk with the script he was to helm, one intentionally fashioned to test even the most accomplished of all directors. Nervous, Lieutenant? Yeah, middle. At close to half a million dollars, it was also the biggest budgeted of all season one Columbo's. Interesting. For filming, it says the producers had already chosen the site, the Century City Plaza skyscraper and parking structure being built on Santa Monica Boulevard. A massive hole had already been excavated where construction was underway every day, all day long, with heavy equipment constantly echoing through the haze of dust. Of the 10 filming days, six of them would be out on location. To his credit, Falk prepared diligently. He poured over the scripts and sought advice from Cassavetes, Spielberg, and other directors. 
but the assignment magnified one of Falk's weaknesses. He was inherently indecisive and now everyone was waiting on him for instructions. After his first production meeting, Falk lamented, nobody clued me, I was to arrive with all the answers. Here cameramen and art directors and lighting men sit around waiting for me to make decisions. If I'd have known, I'd have faked something. <laughs> you got the courage of your conviction. That's an admirable trait, misdirected as it may be. Honestly, that, that really plays into the, the idea that everybody has a specific role on a production and they should stick to what they're good at. <laughs> he spent his days off at the excavation site lining up his shots. I go out there with these guys trailing me to find places to shoot, he said. I finally decide on one site and a construction work worker taps me on the shoulder and says, if you're gonna shoot there, buddy, you better be fast. Tomorrow that won't be there. The constantly changing scenery did, however, help Falk make quicker decisions. If in viewing the dailies, he was unsure about one take, he might not have the option of reshooting be because by the time he returned to the site the next morning, his set might be gone. Once Falk finally finished, he was in no hurry to direct again, especially another Columbo. Now that I've done it, I agree that it's tough, Falk admitted at the time. I don't think the acting suffered at all, but I do think the directing suffers. My acting performance was looser and better. I was so concerned about the camera angles that I didn't have time to work myself up into being tense about the acting. Uptightness never helps. Okay, so I guess he was more at ease because he wasn't thinking so much about the performance. He was so caught up on the way the thing looked and the angles, he didn't really have time to be tense about his performance. Well, it definitely came off that way. He seems like super calm and chill the entire episode. The dramatic final reveal was clearly inspired by the ending to Death Lens a Hand in which Columbo, having planted a seed, induces the killer to try to cover up his crime late at night. Columbo is then waiting for him, suddenly flipping on the lights and catching him in the act. The same stunt would be repeated again and again, including in Requiem for a Falling Star, Swan Song, and Double Exposure. Whether Columbo was renewed or not, Levinson and Link knew that Blueprint for Murder would be the final episode aired of, of any of those they produced, so they wanted to leave their hero a better man. In the show, they had a doctor advise the detective to quit smoking. Just as they abhorred show showing violence, neither did they want to promote lighting up, despite the fact that Levinson was a three packs a day chain smoker. In the final scene after solving the case, Columbo pulls out a cigar and begins to light up, then hesitates. He instead tosses it to the ground and snuffs it into the dirt. Falk played along for the purpose of the script, but would resume smoking in the next season. The cigar was just too good a prop. That's such an integral part of the character and his personality that if you take that away, it just seems you're stripping him of his integrity. But essentially they were like, ugh, Peter Falk, you're being such a pain in the butt here. You can have the hardest episode to direct. And it looks like it scared him off because he never directed another one. Because it's a lot of work. It is interesting, like, with people and their gifts and talents, if you have a talent and you're really, really good at it, you should stick to your strong suits. I mean, like, what do they tell you? It's like, don't be a jack of all trades. Like, have your specific focus with what you want to do and become really good at that instead of being okay at 10 different things. Be good at really one thing. I don't know. I think he, I think he did a pretty, pretty good job. Pretty decent job. What did you guys think? Did the direction stand out to you or not really? I would be interested to know your thoughts so please drop them in the comments below i guess that concludes season one of columbo yay we made it i did make some notes here ranking the columbo season one episodes this is maybe this will change at a later date i don't know but here is my ranking of season one of columbo and this does not include prescription murder or Ransom for a Dead Man, because those are technically considered pilots. I'm definitely gonna have to put number one. Murder by the Book is probably gonna be my number one. I mean, Jack Cassidy is just utterly fabulous in it. And the camera direction, Spielberg, I don't know how you get better than that. <laughs> I just love the tone of Murder by the Book. I love the music. I love Jack Cassidy. Spielberg's camera direction was so freaking good. It, it just hits all the right notes for me. So I'm definitely gonna have to put Murder by the Book at number one. Number two was hard. It was either gonna be Death Lens a Hand or Suitable for Framing, but ultimately I picked Suitable for Framing because the gotcha and the characters, it's so good. I don't know how you get past that gotcha. It's such a good gotcha. Number three, I put as Death Lens a Hand. I love Robert Culp. He's such a good actor. Honestly, that one's probably number three just because of Robert Culp. <laughs> I really love the guy. Number four, I put Blueprint for Murder. I put that because I just really like Peter Falk's performance. Number five, Lady in Waiting. Number six, Short Fuse. And number seven, Dead Weight. Definitely the weakest. Oh, 
But overall, like, pretty good first season. I mean, I think those, honestly, Prescription Murder and Ransom for a Dead Man are two really strong pilots, and then you have, like, three banger episodes in a row. You have Murder by the Book, Death Lends a Hand. Well, Suitable for Framing wasn't really the third episode of season one, but you get my point, is they had some really strong episodes in that first season, and first seasons of any TV show can kind of be wonky because the directors and the producers are still trying to figure out what the show is, and so season one of any show is usually a little awkward, but I would say for Columbo, it was pretty strong. Let me know how these season one episodes of Columbo rank for you. I would be really interested to see how they differ from my ranking and why. So drop a comment. Please let me know. I would be super, super interested to know your thoughts. We have officially finished season one of Columbo and we're going to be moving on to season two. I am going to be taking a brief break. I do want to look at these videos and how I structure them and see if there's anything I really want to change and make a plan for other videos as well. So I might be taking a very short hiatus before I jump into season two because I do want to start jumping into other shows like Star Trek the original series or Bonanza. So I'm going to take some time to really consider that. But we're done with season one. Let me know if you guys enjoy the structure of these videos. Do you like the fact that I read from Shooting Columbo? Do you like the fact that I include my reviews in my reaction video? Videos. Thank you for checking out today's video and I will see you guys in the next season.